really much tervepä terve again. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up Dynamics 365 portals and I'm also gonna give you a little bit of background that what you can do with those. This will be the first part of the series of videos that I'm going to do from this subject. So in the future parts I'm going to delve into more details about uh, Dynamics 365 portals, how to configure those and what you can do with them. So enjoy! So how to set up Dynamics 365 portal? It's done here in the admin center and I'm now here looking at my demo environment, the Dynamics 365 uh, uh, admin center and when I click the applications tab here <coughs> I'm uh, I can see that the portal add-on is not yet configured. So next I'm clicking the manage button over here and it opens up a new browser tab where the web page for giving the portal details is opened. And the first important piece of information is the URL which needs to be available of course in microsoftcrmportals.com domain. So I'm using now, let's try CD testing portal 1.0 domain and it's doing a test now and there's a green checkbox mark now next to the URL so it means that it is available. I use the same as the name of the portal and next I'm selecting the Dynamics 365 instance from the drop down uh, here against which I'm configuring the portal. After that it shows me more information, the portal language selection, the admin, I select this admin user that I'm using currently. The next couple of uh, options here are kind of like uh, pre-configuration information when the portal is actually set up based on these selections here, the audience and the portal type. Uh, will be used when the portal is configured and certain configurations are pre-configured. So I select the community portal because uh, I read uh, from the KB articles that that would be the uh, most common kind of like a template which contains uh, most of the things and then user can hide the things in the portal that is it uh, it is not needed. Um, on the other hand I've actually read also that somebody said the customer self-service portal here the option here would be the best to start with however the portals that I've configured previously um, I've used the community portal and it's been working just fine so I selected that I, I'm going to select that here this time also. Next I select the audience. Uh, I'm selecting the partner audience type now. It's reminding me that uh, internal users will need a uh, user license for this but uh, as this is now a demo so it doesn't matter. And next when I click the submit button it will uh, ask me for accepting the terms of service and when I click the accept button the browser will refresh and the portal configuration will be starting up. Uh, now it says here that uh, my request has been submitted and it might take some time to finish up the portal configuration. Um, there is a link here that I can click to see the status of the portal configuration itself. Uh, it's not showing up anything else but the form which I've just uh, filled out actually. But the way to check the status of the portal uh, uh, installation is actually here in the admin center again. So I go back to the instances tab and there is the my demo uh, instance available. So I click the uh, button here next to the solutions to open the solutions that uh, 
are available or uh, already installed to this uh, Dynamics 365 instance that I'm having here. And now I can see that the uh, community portal that I just selected for the portal type, there is the installation pending status now. And it means that the installation is, is in progress. So I'll get back to this one after a while now to check again when it's done. So I'll pause the video until that. Okay, so here we are in the admin center again. As you can see, the community portal is uh, now in installed and how this is now configured then. So you go to the um, applications tab again in the portal and here you can see the CD testing portal 1.0 that I added the portal name as a portal name. Its status is now configured and if you need to change some settings of this portal you just click the manage button from here and a new tab will open. I had it already opened up here as it takes a while when it's open for the first time. So this is the portal settings page and there are a few navigation items of, on the left navigation where you can find the specific items. Here in the first page, this is basically for informational purposes only. You cannot change anything basically here. These are the same information that we selected in the portal installation page. Well, actually you can set the portal to off state here. So if you want to kind of like the same idea than you do in IIS when you stop the application pool or the website. So this kind of like sets the Azure website to off state. And when you click update, the status is changed. Uh, this is now a trial type of uh, uh, portal, so all the settings that are available in production type of a portal are not available here. One of those is the custom domain setting and the SSL certificate setting that I mentioned earlier. I will show that in a moment from another environment that I have running. But there is one more thing that I wanted to mention. That's the portal actions page. Let's see how quickly it loads now. Well, here it is. This uh, portal has been throwing some strange errors today. As you can see now on the top part, there is one more, but uh, it's basically some slowness or something which causes these, these issues today. But anyways, uh, from this page, the portal actions page, you can, for example, restart the portal, which is basically the same as you would do an IIS reset for a website. So it throws all the portal users that are using the portal at that time out and then restarts the whole portal. So the performance after the restart might be a bit slower than normally. From here, you can also update the Dynamics 365 URL that the, this portal points to. Uh, so if you want to attach the portal to another uh, D365 instance, you can do that from here. There are also other uh, things you can do from here, but I will mention those in another session. On the below part, there are the custom errors uh, disabling option and diagnostics logging option available. These are for troubleshooting purposes when you have, uh, when you configure the portal <clears throat> or do some portal development and you need to see some errors or error messages or custom uh, diagnostics logging. So then uh, uh, you can turn those on from here. So then the actual portal, uh, I have it also open here on another tab in my browser. So basically, um, this is now in the URL that we configured it to in the beginning. 
the CD testing portal 10 at Microsoft CRM portals.com and um, this is now the community portal that we selected in the beginning as a portal template so there are the top navigation items uh, and other pre-configured things available here in the portal and of course the sign-in option is something which needs to be configured so the actual portal users will be CRM contacts that needs to be configured in a certain way I will show those in another session how those will look like so one more thing before we end I'll show the uh, custom domain setting and the SSL setting from another environment. So now we are looking at another environment, which is now of type production, as you can see here. The um, base portal URL points to Microsoft CRM portals.com uh, also in this one. But as you can see, I have configured custom portal URL to point to my own domain here and how that is done is that uh, when you have a production type of a portal you get two more navigation items here on the left menu and from here you can either uh, first upload the SSL certificate that points to your own domain <coughs> or covers your own domain and then second of all you set up custom domain and SSL from here so basically what this does is that uh, it binds the host name of the portal the custom host name to the SSL certificate that you have uploaded and this way you can use the custom um, SSL certificate and domain domain name for your port for your portal so this is basically it now for the basic setup of the portal and how it's done for Dynamics 365 in the next session I'll be covering more the next steps that are required to really take the portal into use. For example, creating the users, configuring the portal data to be shown from CRM and so on. Thank you and have a great day.